Hello, I'm Annette Young and welcome to the 51% and to our first show for 2022. Coming up. As outrage continues over the rising rate of feverside in France, we report on what steps are being taken by French authorities to prevent male perpetrators from reoffending. Also, disturbing new research uncovers that women who are operated on by a male surgeon are more likely to die. We'll be talking shortly to the study's co-author, Dr Angela Gerrath from the University of Toronto. And we meet the female space engineers who are working on the Ariane 5 space project to unlock the secrets of humankind's final frontier. But we begin here in France, where the government has promised to step up the campaign against femicide. This after three women died in suspected domestic violence attacks on New Year's Day. Their deaths causing an outcry by feminists who accuse the government of having failed to protect women. Femicide is starting to become a presidential election issue also, with Conservative candidate Valérie Pécresse now calling for special courts to deal with domestic violence cases. In the meantime, French authorities are scaling up measures to prevent perpetrators from reoffending. Peter O'Brien takes us inside one of the new rehabilitation centres located in Brittany. Ça a été jusqu'à aux violences physiques. Après, au bout d'un moment, ma femme a, a déposé plainte. Après, voilà, je me suis retrouvée au commissariat, en garde à vue. Michael, which is not his real name, is having his third meeting with clinical psychologist Christelle Pellon. Bien sûr, comprendre un passage à l'acte ne l'excuse pas. Understanding someone's actions doesn't excuse them. We always work on this basis. The person has to understand what they've done, identify why it happened, and put processes in place to avoid a repeat offence. Tout un processus pour éviter. It's like a guardian angel appearing out of nowhere and giving you a second chance. It feels good. Since last January, the charity Sauvegarde 56 has assisted 67 men and 6 women. As well as individual mentoring, it also runs group sessions. In a relationship and in life in general, of course, there can be frustrations, but we can avoid resorting to violence. Participants are here on court orders or on a voluntary basis. People often tell us that the space allows them to talk and listen to others, which can help trigger a realization. Once domestic violence perpetrators are out of police custody, their most pressing need is to find accommodation. This is the kind of flat we'll use to house domestic violence offenders. There are two bedrooms, so we usually put two people in here. When they're evicted, they often have nowhere to go, professionally and personally. It's important to find accommodation to calm them down and it also helps keep them under legal supervision. To protect the victims, it's important to work with the offenders too. In France, on average around 300,000 people are victim to domestic violence each year, most of them women. Now, here are some disturbing new statistics. Research has found that women who are operated on by a male surgeon are much more likely to die, experience complications and be readmitted to hospital than when a woman performs the procedure. The study by a group of Canadian doctors examined the operations of some 1.2 million patients between 2007 and 2019. They also found that men who had an operation had the same outcomes regardless of whether their surgeon was male or female. Let's cross now to Toronto and speak to Dr Angela Durace, a clinical epidemiologist at the University of Toronto and a co-author of the study. Thank you so much for your time, Dr Durath. What motivated you and your team to do this study to begin with? 
This this work actually started a few years ago by the lead author of this paper, Dr. Christopher Wallace, who's a urologist at the Mount Sinai Hospital here at uh, in Toronto and an assistant professor with the University of Toronto. He did a he wrote a paper in the British Medical Journal back in 2017 that just looked at outcomes between male and female surgeons. And at that time he also found that female surgeons were showing better outcomes. And um, we were really trying to figure out why. And this current piece is following on from that, where we wanted to look at the relationship between the sex of the patient and the sex of the surgeon. Just take us through some of the key findings. We found that male patients had no difference in outcomes irrespective of the sex of the surgeon, be it male or female, but female patients had a higher risk of that combined outcome of death, readmission and complications, and indeed individually with male surgeons relative to female patients who had surgery with a female surgeon. You are an anaesthetist as well who's regularly in the operating theatre. You must have been shocked with what you and your team uncovered. We were astounded. I, um, we are still trying to work out what's going on here. I think the whole team, we are a group of surgeons and I'm an anaesthetist who works with a whole variety of surgeons across different specialties and across many hospitals. I, I was surprised. To this level, we were really, really astonished ourselves. So the obvious question is why the gender differences in patient outcomes? Why is it that female patients do significantly less well when in the hands of a male surgeon? Yeah, that's, that is the magic question and key here. You know, the short answer of this is we don't know yet. Data science is fantastic at giving you a macro level view of giving you a signal that something's going on here and is able to shed light in areas where perhaps haven't been exposed before. But we suspect that and indeed, not just us, other authors do as well, that perhaps this is being related to non-technical issues. There are differences in perhaps communication style, into personal skills, your own decision making and judgment. So, at we, so, are, so are we talking about unconscious gender bias, particularly when it comes to male doctors? I think we are. I think for both um, male and female physicians, and us as patients as well. We have our own implicit biases about what you prefer and what you don't prefer, and they are unconscious. They've been built, you know, from your experiences, your environment for a very long time. And um, I think we're in a great place right now um, to be able to examine this much more further. I imagine the other important factor in all of this is the, the reality that there are not that many female surgeons to begin with. Absolutely. I think there's about 10% within our cohort here, and I suspect there's similar statistics around the world. I mean, one of the key things we, you know, we'd like to encourage is more women to enter surgery and actually being supported in that specialty where there's been historically huge barriers of entry. It's a tough, tough game. It's a tough place to be. And we want to encourage more women to enter that system. Whatever is going on here requires some deeper thought, much deeper work, probably involving, involving psychologists, behavioral expertise here and some qualitative methodology. And we need to find out what the secret source is actually for all physicians to benefit from, because, you know, we're all different. Dr. Giraffe, uh, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much. It's been great speaking to you. Thank you very much. Now, they have some of the most coveted jobs in the world at Europe's spaceport in French Guiana. Women are making strides in what was for a very long time a man's world. 
A group of female engineers having just helped launch the James Webb Telescope on board the Ariane 5. Emerald Maxwell has more. Four, three, two, one. Behind the scenes at the Guiana Space Centre, it was once all men. But now women have made it into the driving seats, like this analyst from the French space agency CNES. Hélène Escargel's job is to track the Ariane launcher's journey into space. Her favourite bit is lift-off. You never get over that feeling, those knots in the stomach. When the rocket lifts off, I'm very proud to be here. The only difference with men that I've noticed is that when women start a job, we perhaps feel that we need to prove ourselves more, to be recognised. Maria Odriozola agrees. She's also made a place for herself at the European launcher. In this building, where the slightest speck of dust is carefully monitored, the Spanish engineer is in charge of quality control for Ariane space clients. When I was little, I used to look up the sky and stargaze. It was a long road to get here. It wasn't easy or fast, but you have to follow your dreams. Some women have moved continents for the opportunity to work at the spaceport, with their families in tow. It's really my dream job, so my husband didn't hesitate in following me. Normally people say they're coming with their wife and children, but I came with husband and children. Marianne Claire encountered her share of sexism at the start of her career. These days, she's the first woman to head the Guinea Space Center. But even now, she knows not to expect an easy ride. If I fail in one way or another, then someone will think, it's Marianne, she's not good enough, which I could accept because no one's perfect. But others will say, what do you expect? She's a woman. The centre is now making strides towards parity. Nearly 40% of people working here are women. The UN says that worldwide, the number of women in the aerospace industry makes up around 20%. And that's it for now. You can also connect with us via our Facebook page, that of course being France24.51%, or do send us a tweet at underscore 51%. So until our next show, bye for now.